Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago, as we continue this coverage of the U.S. Open T20 tournament. Remember, this is uh, the seventh year, and it's our third year's involvement um, in this wonderful tournament. It provides a number of um, uh, an opportunity for a number of young people here in uh, the Broward County, Florida area to come out and play cricket. And not only guys here, but across the uh, United States of America. Joining us, of course, is a legend in West Indies cricket, a man who every time you come to Broward, you see him here because, you know, he still has that love for cricket. And everyone knows Lawrence Rowe. Lawrence, welcome to our show. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Well, um, tell us a bit about um, the impact that this tournament has created in this area. Well, it has been one of the main things in the in the area here because the stadium was built, and um, we we don't have a lot of international cricket playing here and tournaments playing here. We don't have a club that is um, designated to play in the stadium here. So when this tournament comes along, it's a uh, it's a great thing for Broad County and for cricket in the U.S. And tell us a bit about um, you personally. Are you still involved with any of the cricket teams up there? Or are you still involved in cricket? You look very very fit today. Well, it looks as this even sometimes. <laughs> I feel well, you know, and uh, I say I'm involved here intimately with the stadium. Um, myself and um, Lance Gibbs, as two former West Indies players, when they, um, they built the stadium, we were main part of trying to get cricket here because, um, you know, it's tough in the Americas to get cricket. And um, we were on the, um, the body that is trying to get international cricket here. We were involved... When the West Indies came here, we were involved when the New Zealanders um, played here early on. So we are involved in it here, and we try our best to see what we can do to help to get this great game here in the U.S. Well, it was really a wonderful occasion. I remember being here covering those matches as well. And um, the facility here, it was sold out. And outside the facilities, you had a number of um, activities taking place, which also would have um, gone towards... Um, helping the economy in this area as well because, I mean, uh, thousands came in to, to, to the venue to look at that game. Since then, after that was such a success, why has, has there been no international cricket at this venue since? Um, it's a little bit strange. We are now trying again to um, get some things going. We're in, my foundation is now bringing the West Indies legends here. And we have the likes of Sir Garfield Sobers, Where's our Lance Gibbs, myself, Gordon Greenwich, Larry Gomes, Derek Murray, uh, Andy Roberts, to name a few other guys who are here. And then some of the younger guys, Brian Lara is going to be here. We hope he's going to captain the Legends team against a Cavaliers team that we have put together. And um, the Cavaliers team is yeah, mainly international because we have uh, players from all over the world who are going to take part in that team. We have some Pakistanis, Bangladeshis. Some um, Caribbean youngsters and some youngsters from here in Float Florida will play in that Cavaliers team against these giants of West Indies cricket. We're going to have a banquet on the Saturday night, January 24th, and on the 25th we have a church over game right here. So this is like a, a lovely launching pad to what West Indies had come here and do. And uh, the buzz is around for this particular game because these men are really the gods of West Indies cricket that uh, is coming here. And um, I only hope that the community would come out and support this venture. It's uh, worth the cause. It's for charity. It's for my foundation, this one. But hopefully we can go on and uh, play some legend game throughout the U.S. and uh, probably throughout the world. That's wonderful indeed. And I was, I was looking at your flyer and part proceeds of that venture goes to, to Patrick Patterson, the former West Indies fast bowler, the man who bowled at lightning speeds. Uh, Patterson, of course, are not well these days. Uh, it's going through um, a little bit of problems there and um, we decided, actually I did call him to participate in this match itself and mm -hmm. that is when we, um, we got talking and I found out that you know, he had some problems. So we decided that we would... Um, give the proceeds, some of the proceeds from this event to him. And this is what we are about. Um, we would do this for West Indian legends as we go down the road when we have these games. I mean, the, the, the format is just out there and it, it's so popular now that we are getting calls from New York and Canada and places like that to try to get this, the legends here. So when the guys come here, we're going to have a conversation and see if they want to get into this, if they want to do it. Wonderful indeed. But before we wrap up our interview, um, just uh, to throw back a bit, recently um, the cricket fraternity went into mourning with the death of the Australian batsman um, uh, Philip Hughes, and it you know made me uh, wonder 
you all played the game and you were facing guys with, uh, who were bowling close to 100 uh, miles per hour. And yet, most of you in your area played without the helmets. How did you do it? Well, back then, um, you had to be technically equipped to um, one evade and get out of the line of the ball, as well as score runs. And um, the footwork was great then, although I was a part of the, the transition, wherein the helmet came in, in my era. We didn't cover up totally as they are today. And then we have, didn't have as much of the body armor um, that is there today. So I believe it has um, had a negative effect on the technical skills of the game, wherein players, because they are so well protected, um, some of them was lacking in technique in the modern era. And, um, you know, I think Phil Hughes incident was so unfortunate. I don't think we want to, um, to get any more protection. I think there's enough protection there. This was just one of these unfortunate instances that took place. And he was so unfortunate to have lost his life for it. And we really mourn his loss and so sad for it. Well, um, as smooth as ever, as dapper as ever, Lawrence Rowe, that's the man.